Welcome to the Hope Community Church vlog episode number 14. We're entering Holy Week this week and so for the next few days this uh, vlog is going to be focusing on the Easter story, the life, death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Different folk are going to be giving different content and today we've got Maggie exploring the love of Christ as he lays down his life for his friends. And so sit back and enjoy and I'll see you soon. Hi folks, I have to say I find this one of the hardest things to do, to talk about the cross for just a few minutes, because it's just huge, isn't it? It's a bit like a diamond, it has so many faces, you can look at it from so many angles and see glorious stuff. So I do encourage you, while you've got more time, to look and meditate and ask the Holy Spirit to show you some new and lovely things about the cross. It is at the heart of all we believe and all we stand for, isn't it? Last week, I came across the tail end of this verse in the book of Galatians, where the Apostle Paul gives a beautiful take on what the cross is about. He says, this is what it means for me. The Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. I don't know how that sounds to you, but the first thing that hit me was that it's so personal. Lots of us probably know that really famous verse in John 3.16, that God loved the world so much that he gave Jesus. And that's a wonderful truth too, because it means nobody's excluded from God's love and from the cross. But here, it's not about the whole world. It's about me as an individual. It's about you as an individual that God saw and loved and sent his son for. And the inference is, and I know it can sound corny and you've probably heard it before, but it is that Jesus would have been willing to do what he did if there had just been you. He loves you as a person, as an individual, that much. So the cross is something that's intended to be up close and personal for everyone. The second thing that stands out for me from that phrase that is that something really powerful is going on. This is nothing less than the Son of God loving me and giving himself for me. I suppose you could say that these are two things that have to go together, really loving and giving yourself. In a sense, there's no real love going on in a relationship if there's no giving yourself, is there? And where we love much, we tend to give much, don't we? We can all think of examples of where we've given much to our spouse, or our partner, or our parents, or our kids, or a friend. And to some, it might have looked like sacrifice, but we were glad to do it because we loved and we wanted the best for them. But sometimes, within that love relationship, sacrifice really is called for because there's more at stake for the one that we love. I remember one of our guys in Hong Kong who'd lived with me and he'd come off drugs and he'd been doing well. But he got in a muddle and he'd been arrested for being in possession of drugs. And because he already had a record, he was given a suspended sentence of three years and a very heavy fine. And under the law, that was an appropriate sentence. But he couldn't pay the fine and his family probably wouldn't. So the guy we had accompanying him at court that day called me and asked, what shall we do? And of course, I knew instantly what I must do. I must pay the fine. Was it a sacrifice? I suppose you could say it was. It was quite a sum of money to somebody who didn't have much. But the guy was like a son to me, and whatever he'd done and whatever he might do again, 
his life and freedom were at stake and I wanted to give him a chance to have the best. It's very powerful, isn't it, to see members of the, the NHS and frontline medical staff in particular giving themselves at this time for the sake of others. They may not know them personally, but there's something happening which I believe is from the heart of God that stirs them to step up and to risk their own health and in some cases their own lives because the lives of others are at stake and they want to see folk live, not die. And that's a glorious thing and I think it's a reminder that we're made in the image of God. And so the cross is about that too. Jesus, the Son of God, stepping up and giving himself in love because lives, our lives, were at stake. And not just risking his life, of course, but laying it down to pay the heavy fine for all the rubbish that's kept us and keeps us away from the Father and the life he offers. And like me that day, and like many of our dear NHS folk, Jesus knew it was the only way to be sure of bringing life. And what was the response he was looking for? Well, I think it's the response that my guy chose when he knew he didn't have to go to prison. He didn't know who paid the fine and he didn't need to. But he was so grateful to Jesus that he chose to live fully with him and for him. And he grabbed onto the life and freedom that Jesus had paid for and he used every opportunity to share it with others. Perhaps this Easter, we can ask him to help us to do the same. Bless you guys. Thank you.